Abdullah ibn Umar says in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was mentioning the fitan, the trials, the different tests. He spoke a lot about that. The Prophet spent time with this. Then he says, until he mentioned the fitan of al-ahlas. So these are three fitan in this hadith that follow one after the other. And we're going to look at them because they describe the world where the Mahdi emerges. So the Prophet said, fitnat al-ahlas. Al-ahlas is the plural of al-hils. Hils is this cloth that you put on the back of the camel before you put the saddle or the howdaj or whatever else you put. You usually put a cloth on the back of the camel and that's between its skin and whatever wooden saddle or anything else you put there. So why did the Prophet call the fitna wal ahlas? Because anytime you look at a camel with a saddle on, there's a hils there. Yani it's always there and it's continuous. So from the name of the fitna, you get a clue as to the nature of the fitna. So it's continuous. It's always there. They said, Oh Prophet of Allah, what is the fitna wal ahlas? He said, it is going to be harabun wa harab aw wa harb. There's so much killing. When you see a person, you run away. You don't want to encounter them because they'll probably kill you. A lot of killing for whatever reason. Basically, it'll be wars. There'll be a lot of killing and people will stay away from each other. People will be robbing and looting each other. So this is fitnat al-ahlas. Then the Prophet says, then there's going to be a fitna, and the Prophet called it fitnat as sarra Some scholars said fitnat as sarra because there's a lot of ease and good, and that's the naming. The other scholars said the enemy is pleased with this fitna that's afflicting the Muslims, so it's making them happy. That's why the Prophet called it fitna as sarra But it'll be due to a man who was from my family. Yani his lineage traces back to the Prophet ﷺ. But then the Prophet ﷺ distances himself from him. He says, but he is not from me. He is from me, but he is not from me. Meaning, he is from me, but because of his behavior and his lack of righteousness, I am distancing myself from him. So he's not from me. And he says that my close friends are al-muttaqun, the people who have taqwa. Then people will unite under a man. This is an expression to show lack of stability. Yani he's going to be unstable. Then the fitna of al-duhayma. Sometimes in English books, you'll find this translated as the little black fitna. But in Arabic, some Sometimes you use the diminutive form to show that it's big. So a duhayma here doesn't mean the little black fitna. It means the big black fitna. It does not leave anyone from this ummah except that it afflicted him. And then it says every time you think it's over, it comes back again. A man will wake up a Muslim and by evening he'll be a kafir. Until the people of the ummah Muhammad وسلم, will split into two camps. A camp of iman in which there is no hypocrisy and the camp of hypocrisy in which there is no Iman, which camp is the Mahdiyan, the Iman camp, right? Then he says, when that happens, expect the Dajjal that day or the next. Before the Mahdi, other things happen. Before the Mahdi comes out, there is a Khalifa. When does this happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala. Then the Khalifa dies. Then the three sons of this Khalifa, they fight over the treasures of the Kaaba. Some scholars said there might be actual treasure buried at that point under the Kaaba that they're fighting over. Or it could just indicate whoever is the Khalifa owns all the treasures and he's in charge of the Kaaba and he owns all the treasures of the, the wealthy and of the Ummah. A man seeks refuge at the Kaaba. He flees from Medina and goes to Mecca. Now the hadith are specifically vague. The scholar said some people had their eye on him or someone thought he was special or something but people were after him. But we don't have any of the details. And then when he goes to Mecca then an army is sent to attack him and then the earth swallows up that army. When the earth swallows up that army the Mahdi first of all almost overnight becomes a righteous person. Some scholars said he is just not religious at all. He doesn't even pray. Others said he's just a, like a baseline Muslim. Then the hadith says Allah rectified him in one night becomes the most righteous religious person in the ummah. Let me just end up with this hadith. I'm just going to read it. It's a hadith from Surah Abu Dawood. It says, when Bayt al-Maqdis is taken, Medina will become abandoned. And there are many hadith about the abandonment of Medina and how the Masjid al-Nabawi will become completely empty and deserted and two wolves will come and urinate on the member of the Prophet wasallam. It's very heartbreaking, is a hadith. When Medina becomes abandoned, there will be a great battle. This is the battle between the Muslims and the Europeans. Initially, it was the Muslims along with the Europeans. Europeans as allies fighting a common enemy, the hadith says. Then once that's over, the Europeans betray and turn on the Muslims. And then this is what they call Armageddon. These battles take place. And then Constantinople will be conquered, which is Istanbul. They see how mind-blowing this is? Istanbul is going to be conquered by the Muslims. Istanbul is going to be conquered by the Muslims in the future. So that means we lose Istanbul. The point is Constantinople will be conquered. And when Constantinople is conquered, the Dajjal will appear.